That is Shia Diamond singing one of my favorite songs of hers called American Pie. I think that Shia's voice is so special, which as you'll hear today, is something that Shia doesn't necessarily agree with. You know, the fact that she's making music, that she's a signed artist, it feels like a joke to her, that it couldn't possibly be real. We live in a world that doesn't often show trans people respect. So she asks, why would she think she'd be respected as an artist and musician? We talk about all that today, as well as about running away from home at 14. And she does mention abuse and thoughts of suicide during that time, so just a heads up there. From The Advocate Magazine, in partnership with GLAAD, I'm Jeffrey Masters, and this is LGBTQ and A. I'd like to start with your song, American Pie. I love the framing of it, that you're talking about living truthfully and framing that in terms of the American dream. Can you just talk about the song and what you wanted people to take away from it? Well, the thing is, is I, th- you know, I think just think about my like life and my experience and just like, and just the, like the many people I've met throughout the years. I mean, I've met a whole lot of people throughout the years from state to state running. I feel like a state running from state to state, trying to look for that place where you can find that freedom, trying to find a place where you can be, uh, you know, everybody find, wants to come to Hollywood. You know, everybody believes in that dream of, 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 of that they can do something, that they can do this thing, and they have this um, this dream. Whether it's so small as to have uh, a house in it with a picket fence, and have a sickening piece of trade at home, you know, that's that you could put, you know, your your feet on his back, and he's just, you know. Let it rest there a little bit. Whatever the situation is, I mean, we've lost the the the, the ability to dream because people have taken that away from us. They've told us because we're queer, because we're this, because we're black, because we're trans, because we're gay, because we're this, because we're fat. I had a dream since I was small, and I was told I could not assess that dream because, first of all, I wasn't a girl. I believed wholeheartedly that I was female. So I've been fighting society since my very existence. That's gave, given, society gave, gave me my script and told me, oh, you know, you're not a girl. And you came into this world, this is who you are. So they gave me a script in order to go by, and I refused to go by their script. No, we all came in here butt naked. We came in this world nude. I came into this world wanting. Always wanting, and I still want. And who's going to say my want is not a need? And I think about my existence as a trans woman, and I would not want to go back and be gender nonconforming because I started off gender nonconforming. We started from these experiences. I started as a gay man, boy, whatever you want to call it, gay bodied person, then gender nonconforming, then drag queen, then trans. Now I am a woman, and I want society to adjust to that change. Trans people are who they say they are, not who you want them to be. And when you put it in terms of that, framing it as the American dream, I'm always looking for ways to sell trans acceptance, for lack of better words, and that makes it hard to disagree with. Well, I I feel like we should never have to to sell it. Like, it's a Sprite and say, look, it tastes good. Less filling. Oh, I mean sell in terms of acceptance and passing laws to protect us. We do. We need to decriminalize being trans. We're always going to be the person to be objectified in cages, locked away, pointed at, ridiculed, spectacles. They look at us as animals, as if we're not civilized. Some words I cannot say for some reason. Civilized? Civilized. Civilized. And I guess I haven't had to say that word in a while because I've never been considered civilized. Has that been consistent in your life? That's been consistent in my life. You got to understand where I come from. What if the world changed, our social construct had changed, and you were told that uh, black and darker was superior? 
How would you navigate? Would you be the same person? Would you be the same joyful person with the experiences that we had to experience if you had to one day have, have your foot in our shoes? People in society, they know what's going on. We pretend and we act like we don't. And we pretend like we want to make a change, but we really don't. What is white privilege? There's no such thing. We've been given that script. And we've just adhered to it. Time in, time out, and we have not. And then, then we don't go to this thing that all people are equal. We have to find somebody better. Now, after we've realized that white people aren't better, now black people have to be better. Somebody has to be better in order for somebody to be lesser. Somebody has to be um, poor in order for somebody to be rich. So we monopolize off the things that's happening in this world. So we can look at the, 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 the trans women in their experience or trans people in their experience and know that's not us and that will never be us. And we can hold our head up high and live safely and, and navigate in this world. And these are all things that you sing about pretty directly in your music. Have the label or producers asked you not to do that so explicitly and to sing about other things? Well, uh, you know, I have to be honest with Justin. Justin is a visionary. Justin Tranter. He is. He is a, a visionary. He had the um, people like we were um, another, I think another, another label wanted to sign. And the whole thing was they wanted a lighter music. They did. They wanted lighter music, happier music, less radical music. Um, a, another, they wanted to sign. They wanted a younger person. Another one wanted to sign. But they were just like, we believe her story is just, it's, it's going to overshadow the music. So they believed that because I had a, a freaked up life and I survived that, and I'm living to tell my story in order to, in order to encourage other people that they can survive the, their experiences. Because I'm not the only one that experienced things, and I don't want people to think that. I'm not a victim. I am a survivor. And so through my music, I want to encourage people that you are a survivor too. With Beyonce's song, I am a survivor. I will not give up. Those are songs that feed to our spirit that keep us fighting. But they program us on who to be and how to think. And it's not correct or it's not aiding us or helping us in, in this fight that we're fighting right now in this climate. And it's very important for us to be intentional in all things in TV, TV, in radio. It's important for us to know who our allies are, are now more than ever. So, so you signed with a very big record label. They are, I guess, okay with you singing about political things like this. What I've been fortunate enough to do is, like, I guess through Justin is to have that, that no thing and to have that to stand on. We all stood on what we believed on and we finally found some people who felt just as strongly about it, who didn't question the vision, who ate the music up as in, in the message up and received it and, and believed in music again because of it. So when you can inspire people within the industry that, that this is the whole reason why we're doing music again, then you're doing something. Let's, yes, we all have talent. All of us. We can go and take vocal classes. We can take dance classes and all this stuff and we all can shine. But what is the message that we're giving in it? How are we using our body and our talents and, and our knowledge in order to propel people forward, to get a, a better understanding for people? Because people fear what they don't understand and they hate what they fear. So how are we teaching people? And music is the best tool. TV is the best tool because when people decide that they don't re want to read that book, they will watch the movie. When they decide they don't want to watch the movie, they will listen to the song. So if we can fight for, on, for the airways, our, and we have the right to fight for the, these airway, uh, airways because we have a story to tell. We are part of this big old world that they are trying to shield us, you know, shield the world from us. They're trying to protect the world from us and we're no danger to the world. And so with you and all these other trans women making music right now, I'm thinking about Kim Petras, Laura Jane Grace, Teddy Grieger. Is the industry starting to expand and accept trans women more? Or is that just wishful thinking? It's wishful thinking because you just gave me names I had never heard of. Oh. So it's not my fault for not knowing. It's not my fault. I know who Beyonce is. I know who Sierra is. 
and they're being propelled because there's no shame behind propelling this music. Nobody feels no type of way about blasting that music in their speakers, in the cars, because the world is not objectifying the music or demonizing um, the people who are making that music. Music is just music. And the people who are making the music are human beings. So why are we uh, segregating this thing like we in the days of slavery and, and, and cis people and trans people and gay people are not working together in a way of unison, in harmony, in a way that's combating all these things, is showing in sisterhood. I believe if people really stood for change in this climate, that a cis woman would say, yes, I want to, to do a duet with one of those trans women. It doesn't have to be Shea Diamond. But one of those trans women, because I stand in solidarity, because I believe that just like her life is on the line, my life is on the line. Because if, if a person says that they're trans, but another person is mistaken as trans, they're both going to be killed. So understand your womanhood itself is being questioned. Your femininity is, uh, is being questioned. So I believe that gay men as well and gender nonconforming and all the whole spectrum should be protecting trans women. Because we're fighting for our femininity. And femininity has always been under attack. Nobody needs to, 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 to know that. You've been told in your society you can be anything you want, just don't be no girl. We've been told in society that being a girl is being weak. We've been programmed to think in these things. And so when you see a trans person transitioning into the weaker sex, you feel some type of way. You feel some type of way because you feel like you're losing strength, but you're not losing strength. You're gaining strength because it takes a whole lot of strength in order for that person to show their face every single day against a society and their judgment, their ridicule, and knowing that they can be killed every single day. And who wants to be a public trans figure knowing that they can be killed in this climate? We are not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for each other. Because we are all we have at the end of the day. Nobody's protecting us. Law enforcement is not protecting us. They're saying blue lives matter. They're not screaming with us, trans lives matter. They're not doing that. They're not standing with us. You don't see them protecting us when we're coming and we're public and stuff. They know who we are. They know who we are. We, they watch who we are. And just like my days of, of 10 years, my, my, my years of 10 years in prison, I know how they govern things. I know when, when, when you call the authorities because you have a problem, that you are the one that's being interrogated. You're the one being questioned. They're looking at you and objectifying you and looking at you and saying you're finding, finding reason that you're the fault for it because you don't blend in, in. You shouldn't have that hair. Maybe you should wear your hair short. They're thinking everything you should not be doing, not what the person did to you. So that's our experience every single day. And they think that, that, we're, that we're weak. We are the most powerful individuals on this earth and still raising hell. Yeah. And, and now with being incarcerated, were you open about being trans at that point? I was openly trans. You were in a men's institution. In a male's institution. Yes. Was there any sort of discussion about sending you to a woman's prison? Well, I, I tried to fight at some point about getting it, but at that point I hadn't had um, gender reassignment surgery. Oh, and so for them that is a requirement. And for them that is a requirement. And, and then so we had also had trans women who had had, had their surgery and who had went to the, the, the female's institution. And it still wasn't safe for them and at the female's institution, so they were sent back to the male's institution. So there's no safe place for us, because you have to understand, people be believe that our belo body belongs to them. So male or female, when you're giving and you're put into a situation and you're in a, in a female's institution, they believe because you used to be male-bodied that, they have, that they, they're, done, they're not doing anything wrong because having sex with you, taking your sex or taking your body is something they have a right to because you should be a man or you used to be a man. So it's a lot of things that happen within our experiences that, that, that we are getting, 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 getting an experience that nobody has to go through. Our, our rapes are different than the cis rapes. It's just more horrid. There's more backlash that comes behind the cis situation if they get caught. If he rapes a, a cis woman, some people will understand. You, but oddly enough, some people will understand. They will say, well, that's a woman. That's her job. That's what she's supposed to do. But as a trans woman, they're going to demonize him for doing that. So he's going on to kill that trans woman because somebody found out that he was with somebody who wasn't a woman before. There is an experience that comes with being trans. So my song, There's an Outcast in Everybody's Life, everything to everything, like the, like the seasons, 
There's a reason for every single song I write. In The Outcast in Everyone's Life, that's from I Am Her, right? Yes. And you wrote that while in prison. While in prison, because you got to understand my experience before I got incarcerated. Because you got to understand, nobody wants a trans child. I was a trans child. Nobody wants a trans child. And this is not to demonize my parents. It's not. Because we don't know the things that we know now. And so we're, we're a, a lot under, more understanding. But the experience that we had then, to be able to live, to tell a story. Now, a lot of us killed ourselves because of the experience that we had in our households. And I was one of the ones who was going to. I was going to, at 14 years old, I was going to end my life. I was not going to sis have, I seen it all. I was not going to write, I am her, to live the tale, to, to say that. But I had to be stronger than all the doubt I had in my heart and my mind. I had to be stronger than all the ridicule all the harassment, all the neglect that happened in my life, not from just family, but friends that I had held dear, that I gave my last to. I felt I was a good person. Why aren't I just allowed to live? And during this time, I'm seeing RuPaul shining. RuPaul is shining during this time. People are starting to understand, no way, that's not a, that's not a, that's not a man. Oh, wow. da 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 they started to understand that as entertainment. So drag queens have always been entertainment, but trans people have always been the joke. And so I'm trying to find a way to recreate what our role is in society. And I've, I believe a lot of other trans women are trying to do the same thing. You are trying to recreate this for society and you're using your music for that. Yes. How does that combine with the fact that the music industry is an industry? It's a business and they prioritize making money. Right. Okay. Because I believe we are the money. Within the LGBTQ spectrum, we are the freaking money. We are the reason why every celebrity is who they are. Everything be be between the, the choreography to the hairstyles, dancing in their videos, doing their makeup. We are music. We are love. We've given these things despite knowing our reputation that we hold in their eyes. They don't uplift us like we, we uplift them. We have to pay them to come into our spaces. Nothing has changed since the days of Sylvia and Marsha. Nothing has changed. But now we're attacking each other. Y'all put us against each other. Because it says there's only room for one trans woman. It's only one, if, if we say, okay, there's going to be a trans artist. It's going to be her. Then there's no room for no other trans artist. There's so many brilliant trans singers that I've run into. Never be seen. So is it kind of wild to you that you are breaking through with your music? I am I'm grateful. I am still in awe. To me, I'm still in my freaking cell dreaming. And I'm going to wake up to this cold cell. And everything that's transpired from these years that I've been out and everything I've achieved since I've been out is going to be chopped up as a dream. I've done it before. Ten years, I've dreamed. Had nothing but time but to dream. I'm still in a sense of disbelief. Even now, if we're sitting here, I don't believe it. I should have said, pinch me. You might she come on now. No, seriously. That's where I am. I came from the dirt roads of Little Rock, Arkansas, honey, and I'm walking the red carpets now. That's not something that was meant for me. Society, I'm too dark, too trans, too fat, too old. And with all those things, it is still incredibly unique for a woman in her 40s to be entering the music industry. Just entering the music industry. Yes, it is. Because we've been programmed to think that it's time up. But in my trans life, I spent most, uh, what, 10 years in prison? So that translates to me not even being 40. Because you, when you're incarcerated, time stops. It stops for you. It literally stops. So the world keeps on going. But time stops for you. You're not in the same time. Time doesn't even translate the same. And so people are growing up and all this old stuff, and you're sitting up there in, in prison with a black and white TV. And we incarcerate more people in the U.S. than any other country. 
Of those people, three-fourths will wind up back in prison within five years. Recidivism. Yes. Is that part of the conversation amongst those in prison and the staff? It's talked about, but I feel like it's not talked about on a large scale because they don't want you to have those type of discussions. Any type of group discussions or meetings is is, is investigated and, and, and looked at as to be a threat. So coming together in any type of way... Is considered like you may be trying to incite a riot or something. So if you mention something about recidivism, you may get three tickets that day just because somebody's job is on the line and they heard that. So they're not going to allow you to get up out of there. They're going to throw shanks under your on your bu- under your bunk if you do too much good time. There's no such thing as doing good time. Now, when you go without catching misconducts which they give you infractions just for nothing most of the time. There is no system of accountability. Like, you are um, never um, credible. You're always guilty. Like, there's no such thing as, you know, innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, you can't dispute thing. anything. No, I, you can't dispute anything. Like, once we, as in, in our queer bodies, get into those spaces, then the de- de- how they demonize us in the world but we're free. We have rights so that we can speak out. We can do certain things. But in there, you lose all your rights. You lose your right to your body. You lose your right to your expression. You lose the First Amendment. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so knowing all of that, why is it that you said that you wrote music so aggressively in prison? I would think that that would clamp down on creativity. Well, for me, um, when you have nothing to do but to... Learn yourself. Like, there's nothing but space. It's just you. There's nobody else around. There's just four walls. You have to figure out who you are. You think and overthink. You process and overprocess things. You think about your, 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 your existence from a child to a teen and your uh, young adult. You realize the story, and you realize there's a story behind that, and every story, that's a song. That's what music is. Music is, is just stories. It's, it's feelings that we project. Music is thoughts. It's um, values. It's all these things we put into music. So um, so for me, my experience, you know what my trans experience was. I was demonized as a trans child. And, you know, I fought a lot. Fought a lot. As a child, as in my queer body, just as, as a little queer, little seven-year-old, I fought Fought. Nobody else had to do no, no other seven year olds had to fight because they were too girly. Nobody else had to fight because they weren't, you know, the gender, you know, nobody else was kicked out of their homes because they chose to 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 live their truth. Is that why you ended up in foster care? Yeah, you know, like I said, I've always been queer, so I always got whooped, you know, for for either using the restroom correctly, you know, boys don't sit down and use the restroom. So, you know, for a while I, I, you know, wet myself for a long time. And so other, other, other teenagers didn't have to go through that. You know, so it's very uncomfortable. I feel the same way like how, how America now goes into the bathrooms and wants to know what is your gender? What, is your, what, is, what do you have between your legs before you go into this restroom? It's absolutely disgusting. And so I lived that experience, but it was just until when I got 14, when I realized that puberty wasn't on my side. When I realized, like like the other girls, I wouldn't develop, and then when I realized my conditions wasn't going to change, I refused to live in that existence anymore. I couldn't do it anymore. Now, I believe that night my mother had found pictures of, like, this sexy guy I was, I was like, messing around with when I was, like, in the acting world. You know, very early, you know, like, you know, I realized that where you that's where you get the boys, you know. And so it was this model, you know, guy that was in this play and, you know, he had these very um, sexy photos and he was wet in the shower and his little speedo and stuff, muscles chiseling, face of a, a dauntless god. And, you know, they were in my little drawer. I kept them and my mother found them and she just went ballistic. Her Christian values that she were taught, that she was programmed, her script that she was given as a child, enacted rage, enacted fear that she didn't understand. It was out of love. She didn't want me to be killed. So she thought she could beat it out of me. You were 14. I was 14. 
And um, so that was my last time I ran away. And so I couldn't say that was the last time I would be hit by anybody because I was too feminine. So without a plan, how knowing what this crazy world had to offer me without being introduced to what the world was going to give me as this queer body, without having the love and moral support of anyone, I tried to just leave with what I had on my back and there was no shirt, I think no socks, and like just a suspender um, short set. And um, it was it was that day that a friend of mine was like, no, you're going to be in the talent show. No, you have to be. I was telling him, I was like, look, I'm running away from my home. You know, like, you know, da 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 Trying to figure, for, figure out an easy way to tell him why I'm running away from home. To say this big old thing that you know that people don't like and that, that would demonize him even if he, as a friend, as a straight man, you know, why are you being friends with this person? That's the time that we lived in. And, and um, it was just like a week ago that I had what was in a play with him. In the play, I came out as gay to him, same guy. So I told him that what had happened in the play was who I was. That was the easiest way I can explain to him. There was no such thing as, as a trans then. We didn't have a word for it. It was either he, she, it. So he was like, look, I'm not judging you, but you need to be in a talent show. You need to sing. I was like, didn't you hear what I just said? I'm running away. I have nowhere to go. He said, look, there's a, a, a temporary um, runaway place for, for teens here, da-da-da-da-da-da, so-and-so, so-and-so. I'll give you all the information, but you are in the talent show. Everybody wants you to sing. So before people knew of my experience, I was already popular in singing. People had already taken notice of it. People would cling to me at the lunch tables because I would beat on the tables and sing every popular song from Mary J. Blige to Whitney Houston and everything else in between. Didn't matter, female or male, people would still respond well. And so that trans uh, trans transcended into something else. The other people who sang would start a whole other different table. They would do music at that table and there would be a competition of who table we're going to sit at. Those were simpler times. They were difficult, but they were simpler. People have always responded to your voice, it sounds like. When did you yourself realize how special your voice is? Well, first of all, I still don't think my voice is special. How can you say that? I mean, I think about just like, like I, I, I see the beauty in everything. I see the music in, in everything. So I, like I tell you, everybody's talented. So for me, I've never been told, like, I've had this every special thing. Like, I've told you, nobody told me I was beautiful. Nobody, as a child, nobody told me I was talented. They only told me I sang too high. I sang like a girl. Put the bass in your voice. Deep in your voice. So I was never told, oh, yeah, you can sing. Do you believe that now? I do not. Really? I do not. <laughs> I still think, even in this climate, that... It's a joke, you know, and I know that sounds horrible, but I just don't feel like we're respected as human beings, so how can we be respected in the art? It just, it has, it has to be, maybe they're ridiculing me. Maybe I'm the butt of the jokes. Maybe, maybe it's just because so many people have hope and a dream and making this and propelling this forward that, we're under some illusion, but reality is going to smack us back in the face that we're just going to only be supporting other people and trying to emulate other people. My music is me. My music is not pretending to be somebody else. So people aren't going to re re receive it in a way. My music speaks about oppression. It doesn't speak about how to pop your booty. It speaks about how times should change. It speaks about how we should, like, you know, center ourselves, like self-care, you know, it's the most important things because if we don't have self-care in ourselves, how can we care for anybody else? So my music doesn't speak to throw it around, get the money, bling, bling, bling. My music speaks to, uh, we have a messed up government. It's time to tear down this system of oppression, the marginalized. It's talking about survival sex workers. It's talking about stuff that people aren't able to comprehend, wrap their hands. They don't want to think about these things. While we're, I'm creative and I think about different ways to project 
um, different ways to send a message. I said, okay, they want to dance. Okay, so I'm going to give them a, 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 a song that they're going to dance to that's still upholding to the roots of, of this message. So I believe I did that in the, in a song, and, you know, I hope that this one will be received well. I want to take on more roles as not just being an act, but also being a director as well, too, because I have a vision. I've always had a vision. I've had years on top of years to dream on this vision. And so I believe I could be the perfect asset to, to how things can just like lighting, you know, light up and, 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 and ignite fires and not just create sparks, but igniting fires. Some, you know, that they can't unsee, like American Pie. Like for us to get the opportunity to tell our stories is the most important thing. And so I think what makes my music so authentic is because I'm not trying to be Beyonce. I'm not trying to emulate her sound or anybody else's sound. When we hear my music, we hear something new. We say, okay, is this funk? Is this soul? Is this jazz? Is this what? You know, you can't determine because it's coming from a place you've never heard. Some of my songs may sound in body James Brown. You know, it may sound a little, you know, <laughs> You know, like, it's, it may just be a whole lot of funk, a whole lot of attitude, a whole lot of sass. Now I have the opportunity to live. I have, I have the op more opportunities to have more experiences, more pleasant experiences, to write about more ple pleasant experiences. Because before, my experiences were quite, you know, dark. So you got something that is to let us know that we're not so different. And I, I, I believe that... I can do that and not telling a story that's going to be toxic to to the representation of what it means to be a trans woman. And I don't want to do that. I don't want us to be spectacles. I don't want us to be just entertainment. I want you to know that we're serious freaking artists and we're here and coming to snatch an edge. I think you're doing that. <laughs> I have to let you go. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much. And that was She a Diamond. You can hear her singing the new theme song to the HBO show called We Are Here with Shangela, Bob the Drag Queen, and Eureka. If you enjoyed this interview, please leave a five-star ranking and review on iTunes and post about us on social media. Go, go now, and make sure you tag us. I'm on Twitter at JeffMasters1. The podcast is on Twitter at LGBTQPod. And we really love hearing from you every week. So thank you for that. LGBT Q&A is brought to you by The Advocate Magazine in partnership with GLAAD. Come check out all of our amazing work at theadvocate.com and GLAAD.org. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye.